There are many videos on chain stretch and chain wear, but our goal here is twofold. Number one, what is chain stretch and does the chain really stretch? Number two, what are the best inexpensive tools to measure this chain stretch? And most of you probably are not using the best tools. We'll show you which ones to use. We can demonstrate the makeup of the individual links in this mock-up. One link really involves an inner and outer plate. You can see the inner plates, rollers, pins, sometimes called rivets. And if we were to measure 24 half links on our chain, it would come out to 12 inches. That is from the center of this pin to the center of this pin would be exactly an inch and half a link from here to here or here to here would be exactly one half inch provided there's no wear and this is a new chain. With chain wear, nice round circular part of the links both inner and outer become somewhat oval and deformed with the wear with the pins rubbing on the link there's wear occurring on the roll the pins themselves as well as the roller such that we can see it doesn't really stretch but now can elongate as a result of this wear as the chain wears and elongates so-called stretching the individual rollers of the chain move up on the teeth of both the chain ring and the sprocket causing wear to these components skipping of the chain poor shifting and just overall poor chain performance the variety of chain wear checkers on the market most of them are two points either they will, will have a curved portion that goes between rollers or pin and in case of the park CC 3.2, it has a 0.5% and a 0.75% wear indicators that'll go further down between rollers. Or on others, you can adjust the tool such that when it's tight, it gives you an indication of chain wear. We're going to show you how to use a two point by demonstrating using the CC 3.2 from Park. With a two point chain wear indicator, We'll use the hook or pin, as it might be, in between inner links, so the pressure is on the roller and not the, and on an outer link, and we check it first at 0 0.5. If it goes through, there's 0.5 percent wear, and if there is, we'll check it with the other end and see if the 0 0.75 percent goes through. We'll explain to you a little bit later when to replace your chain because it varies according to the speed of the chain and type of chain. Now let's take a look at the three-point chain checker. This one happens to be from Pedro but Park and several other manufacturers make something similar. By the way these are for our chain hook that we're not going to use in this video. But we can see that there are three points of interaction of this chain wear indicator with the chain and we're going to show you how to use it and why it's superior to the two point. By the way the instructions printed on the tool may be somewhat misleading so follow our guidelines in this video. Let's take a closer look at this three point chain wear indicator. If you look at the end that's going to insert into the chain it's beveled such that if it goes part way in is 0.5 percent wear it goes all the way in just below the 3 on this, there's 0.75% wear. To use it, we use our middle hook and we're going to put it in between inner links so it's not obscured or present problems with the pressure on the outer link. And then we're going to insert our tension hook and grab it, push up with our thumb and finger. With the other hand we'll push down and we can see that the tool doesn't go down between the links at all therefore this chain is not worn 
to any significant degree. It's we suggest using the tool in several different areas. Main tension, push down. Don't use the tool with a mass with the area with the master link. So let's see why the three point is superior to the two point. With the two point, we're essentially fixing this pin and measuring the distance between the rollers. You can see that there's a slight difference compared to a normal chain. With the three point, we're fixing but pushing the rollers in the same direction. Marked difference that we can note with the chain wear indicator. Essentially the three point is compensating for wear of the roller to give us a true elongation between pins. This is important because this is what we want to measure, pin distance, and some chains, some 12 speed chains, vary in roller size. That is the SRAM and Eagle have larger rollers than are present on other chains. So at what point do I replace my chain? Well, it depends on several factors. One, the speed of the chain, and in some cases the type of chain you're using. For 10 speed or less, it is suggested that somewhere between 0.5 and 0.75 percent you can replace your chain. For 11 through 13, the chain is, the links themselves are thinner, space between the links may be the same as the link itself is thinner to accommodate the increased number of cogs in the back and you're going to want to replace those sooner and it's suggested in those cases for 11 through 13 at 0.5 percent and in a few cases such as SRAM Red or Eagle check the manufacturer's recommendations. When all is said and done I suggest if you don't have a three-point chain wear indicator you go out and buy one. It's far more accurate and it's far cheaper than replacing the chain rings or the sprocket or cassette on your bicycle. If you have any additions, questions, please comment below. Subscribe to keep up with our latest videos. This is Tony of Tony 10 Speed. Safe cycling.